because when we're studying statistics, we calculate this correlation coefficient and we like to usually jump to the conclusion that one of these things causes the other, right? But that's not always the case. And you gotta be really careful when you study this stuff to not jump to conclusions, right? So let's take a couple of, of examples. And the title of the section is correlation does not imply causation. That means that A does not always imply B or cause B. Um, uh, when we study these things. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Let's look at case number one. Let's say that X really does cause Y. That is a possibility. Obviously, when you have two variables correlated, it's possible that the variable X, the independent variable, is really causing Y. Um, but in almost all real life problems, there's usually multiple causes of things. So you gotta be careful not to jump to this conclusion. But the best example I can think of where X is probably causing Y or at least highly influencing why, would be the example of age versus shoe size. Now really what's happening is that age is influencing the size of their body, and the size of their body is influencing shoe size, but forget about breaking it down to biology. I'm just talking about in general the concept of age and the concept of shoe size. As age increases, in general, shoe size is going to also increase. So this is a good example of when the variable X, age, is most likely really causing Y. Now there are other factors at play, obviously. Um, the genetics, do, you, do your parents have, are they tall or short, are, 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 are you uh, on a normal growth curve, are you eating enough food? You know, there's lots of things, but in general there's gonna be a pretty strong correlation between age and shoe size, and mostly it's just because as humans get bigger, or as huge, humans get older, their bodies get bigger, and then they're, they need bigger shoes. I mean, that's pretty much what you're saying. So this is what you gotta be careful of, though, because a lot of times you'll draw this conclusion when you, need, when you shouldn't draw this conclusion. So even in this case, I would never say, hey, age causes shoe size. I would just say, I believe it's likely that age is a strong influence in the shoe size, but there are other factors. I've even told you two of them just off the top of my head. All right, so let's look at another case. This is more of a case you need to watch out for. Let's say that it's not actually X causing Y, it's actually possible that you could be tricked because Y could actually be causing X. And that's the second case you gotta, be, gotta watch out for. Now in this case, it's not true because the shoe size of a kid is not determining or influencing their age. This case, it's a one-way street. The age is influencing the shoe size, the shoe size is not influencing the age, so that's why we put it in this bucket. But in other cases, it's very possible that things could be going reverse of counter to what you kind of conclude. So an example of that would be the correlation uh, between uh, windmill, so notice all the windmills on the side of the road generating electricity, speed, and wind speed. Okay, let's say uh, you look at this data you, count, you, you look at the windmills and you see how fast they're turning. So you record the windmill speed. How fast is it rotating? And then you also measure how fast is the wind moving. So you know there's a correlation between these two variables. But is, I mean, I know that you're smart people, so you look at this and you say, well, the wind speed is really probably uh, the, the thing that's... Uh, 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 causing the windmill to turn, but if what if you accidentally turned it around and you got fooled into thinking that the windmill speed is actually causing the speed of the wind? You know that that's not possible to happen, okay? But you got to be careful when looking at things like this. Let me rephrase what I'm saying here to make it a little more clear. Let's say you made two columns of data, the windmill speed, and then in the second column, the wind speed. Now you know which one's causing which, but pretend that you don't. Pretend these are two variables, you have no idea how they're related to one another. You record the windmill speed and the wind speed. Then you're gonna, if you assign the windmill speed to be the independent variable, then you're gonna see a relationship because as the windmill speed increases, I mean, just draw it here. Uh, this is the windmill speed, and this is the wind speed, the actual speed of the wind. Now, think about it. As, as, you re, as you notice that the windmills are spinning faster, it is also true that the wind is blowing harder. So if you were to draw this, you would see a line like this and you would see some data over here, right? And you would calculate a positive correlation coefficient um, and you would incorrectly, if you're not careful, you would incorrectly say that the windmill speed is causing the wind speed because you see a positive correlation. Because I know that you know logically that this isn't true, but if you don't know how these things are related and you don't know what these things are, you're just going to have a table of numbers here and a table of numbers here. So if you label this as the independent variable and this as the dependent variable, as windmill speed increases, sure enough, 
the wind was blowing harder in those cases, so you're going to see a positive correlation coefficient. So if you see a positive correlation coefficient there, you might incorrectly say, well, windmill speed causes the wind to go faster, but you know that's not true. So that's why we put it in the box of uh, y might be actually causing x. In this case, this is y. This may be actually causing the windmill to, to spin faster. So this is a real obvious case, but if you're studying uh, drug interactions or something, you might say drug A is causing drug B to happen, or interaction B to happen, but actually it might be the reverse. It might be something to do with the reverse of what's happening that's actually the causal relationship. So just because you plot something and get a positive correlation coefficient, don't automatically assume that this causes this, because I just gave you an example of when that's not true. All right. The third case is probably my favorite. It's, it's very interesting. What if you had a case where x is influencing y, maybe not totally causing y, but influencing y, but there's another variable, z, which is influencing x and also influencing y. This is probably one of the most common situations that you'll actually see in real life, because Nothing is ever cookie cutter in life where you have just X causing Y. You, even in the example of age and shoe size, I gave you other variables like genetics, food consumption, maybe you know where you live, your, you know, all kinds of things can be taken into account uh, that could maybe indirectly be influencing or causing some of these other things. So this is an example of when uh, X could be influencing Y but also could be influenced in other directions. Um, so. Let's uh, go ahead and draw or let me write down something uh, here that might be illuminating. I find it amusing. But let's say that you do a study of people who go to sleep with their shoes on. And what you, can, what you see is that sleeping with shoes on, right, sleeping with shoes on, is correlated with waking up with a headache, right? And what I mean by that, let's pretend that you don't know what shoes are. You don't really know, like, let's pretend you're studying, like, genetics of a fruit fly or something crazy, like, really detailed. This is obviously simple to understand, but pretend you don't really know that this is nonsense, okay? You're just studying the concept of sleeping with shoes on, and how many of those people wake up with a headache? And let's say you label the shoes, sleeping with the shoes on is the independent variable. So let's say you go over here and you say, okay, this is uh, sleeping, sleeping with shoes on, right? And this is headaches. And surprisingly, your data looks something like this. I'm just going to draw the dots for now. Right? So you look at that and you say, whoa, that's pretty interesting. I can draw a line kind of through that. That looks like a positive correlation coefficient because it turns out the people I surveyed, the, the, the uh, more times they slept with shoes on, it turns out the more times they had headaches. So this person maybe only slept with shoes on a little bit, had few headaches, and this person slept with shoes on like 15 times and had even more headaches. So I'm really thinking that these are not only correlated, that's, that's true that these are correlated. They're true if it falls on a line and the correlation coefficient is non-zero. But I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to say that this causes the headaches. That sleeping with shoes on causes the headaches. That's the fallacy. That's what you have to not do because it's not true. Sleeping with the shoes on does not actually cause the headaches. There could be other factors influencing both. For instance, what if you go to sleep uh, because you've been drinking that night. You've had too much to drink. You've had too many glasses of wine or whatever. So maybe you just fall asleep in your bed, you literally crash, you have your shoes on, and you wake up in the morning and you happen to have a headache. So I know that's not like necessarily like the best example in the world, but it's amusing because you might incorrectly draw the conclusion that sleeping with shoes on causes headaches when in fact there's some other external variable that is causing you maybe sleep with the shoes on and also indirectly causing the headaches to happen as well. So don't make that jump saying that X causes Y just because you see correlation here. Correlation does not imply causation. It doesn't mean for sure that this is causing this. It might be influencing it. Well, in this case, it's kind of ridiculous. It might be influencing it, but it also could be because of other external factors. Now, let me just kind of squeeze one more on the page here. There's one more case. What if you have X and Y all right, and then you have z influencing x and z influencing y. So that's kind of the final case here. All 
All right, so in our third case, we have the case where x is influencing y, maybe giving some sort of uh, uh, causal relationship there, but also there's another factor at play, some other variables influencing each of these separately. So you've got to be careful not to say that x causes y, because in many cases another factor could be influencing both of them. So here's an example of that, and I'll just kind of write it down. It's kind of it's, it's a little bit long-winded, but let me write it down and so that you can really see what I'm talking about. Let's say that there is a positive correlation okay, between, that's B-E-T, between the uh, type of anesthesia used, anesthesia used, uh, during surgery, when you're put under surgery, uh, and the death rate because of the or the death rate of patients that come out of that surgery. So what I'm trying to say is that let's say you make a table, you study a thousand people, and you look at the type of anesthesia that was used in the surgery, and then you look at how many of those people for the different types of anesthesia died like within 10 days after the surgery. And you might, let's say, get a chart kind of like this. If you put the uh, type of anesthesia here and the number of deaths, you might see that as you, in, you, you change the, maybe the strength of the anesthesia or the type of it or whatever, as you march on this way, you might see more and more and more deaths, right? So you're going to get really alarmed and you're going to say, well, well, obviously the type of anesthesia is causing the death rate, right? Because as I, as I use this drug, I have this many people die, and then as I change it to this drug, like a hundred times of the number of people died. We have to go to the hospital right now and make them stop using this anesthesia. See, that's what you gotta be careful of. Correlation, even if you have correlation like this, does not imply causation. For instance, right, maybe you have a situation where the type of anesthesia might be influencing the death rate, but maybe you have a third factor that's influencing both. What other third factors could be at play here? One of the biggest ones could be um, what type of surgery are you having, right? What type of surgery is it? That's a huge variable. What if you're having open heart surgery? That's a really complicated surgery that's going to naturally probably have higher complications or maybe brain surgery. That's going to be totally different than maybe append take your appendix out, which is a very relatively simple surgery, or surgery on your toe because you have a toenail that's you know infected or something like this. So maybe the type of surgery dictates the type of anesthesia that you need to use, but the type of surgery is also has different risks, so the death rate is influences, influenced as well. So yeah, there could be an interaction between the type of anesthesia and the death rate, but also the type of surgery could be influencing it. Also, the type of, uh, it could be uh, not the type of surgery necessarily, it could be the genetics or, your, or the medical history of the person that could be influencing it. Maybe, um, obesity or family history or whatever could be influencing these. Maybe different people are allergic to different medicines, so they have to use different anesthesia. So that's how the variable's influencing the anesthesia you're using. But maybe the person's family history or their genetics also is impacting the death rate. You know, when you have surgery and you have family history plays a big part in how you come out of that. So those are just two examples where a third variable can be influencing it. So you don't want to draw the incorrect conclusion that X causes Y because there always could be other variables at play. All right, fourth one, this one's a little bit more fun, I think. What if you have X and Y, those are two events. Now let's say X doesn't have any cause into Y. Let's say that it's actually influenced, they're both influenced by another variable Z. So you wanna be careful not to say that X causes Y, okay, because your correlation might say X causes Y, but in fact, see, I don't have any arrow drawn here, drawn here because it turns out that X and Y might be completely influenced by another variable. It's very simple, similar to this one, except we remove the error arrow because it's possible that this third variable completely controls X and Y, where there's no joining between, there's no correlation, well, there's a correlation between them, but there's no causality of X causing Y. So this is a kind of a fun example, but let's say uh, the correlation correlation between um, sleeping with shoes on, right, which is a little bit ridiculous, and waking when you wake up with a headache. All right, because I like this one so much, I'm going to draw a picture of it. Let's say let's draw this guy. Let's say this is on the uh, x-axis down here. This is sleeping with shoes. 
and this is headache. Let's say that you don't know this is kind of ridiculous because you're studying something really complicated. All you do is you collect and you talk to people and say, um, how often have you ever slept with shoes on? And then you get that number. And then you say, hey, how often do you wake up with headaches? And you get those numbers and you plot that data. Let's say your data looks something like this, right? Seems to go up, right? Maybe it's not super tightly packed, but it seems to go up. So you draw a line through there and say, wow, that's a positive correlation coefficient. Sleeping with shoes on must be causing these people to wake up with a headache. That's what you conclude from that, right? You've got to be careful, though. Correlation does not imply causation because it might not have any connection between X and Y. We all know that sleeping with shoes on has no bearing on if you actually have a headache. It's not going to actually cause your body to have a headache. What's going on here? Let's say one, just one single example. What if you went to sleep drunk? or you went to sleep with too many glasses of wine. You get home and you're just exhausted and you just crash on the couch. You fell asleep with your shoes on and very likely in those cases, when you go to sleep too much to drink, you're gonna wake up with a headache. So the data here is looks like these two things are connected as far as causality, um, but what's really going on is they are correlated. I'm not trying to say they're not correlated. I mean, the, the sleeping with the shoes on is correlated with the headaches. The problem is you don't want to make that extra jump and say this causes this because in this case there's absolutely no causality between the two, none, but yet it looks like it because the data is, is, is the way it is and the reason is because a third factor completely influences X and the third factor completely influences Y, whereas up here we had a little, maybe a little bit of X influencing Y, but this one there's no, no X influencing Y, it's all due to a third factor. So that's a, a really long-winded way of saying Correlation does not imply causation. When you find a correlation coefficient, even if it's 0.995, very close to 1, or negative 0.976, really close to negative 1, you've got to avoid the tendency to say that this causes this unless you have a lot of data and you've studied it and you've looked at all possible external factors, which you really never can do. But you can, you can study it till you're blue in the face and you can try to eliminate other things and then maybe you're trying to prove the point that this causes this. But you definitely don't want to just look at a, co a correlation coefficient and say that this causes this because it's often the case that there's other factors at play. So make sure you understand this. It's a really important thing for you to understand as we study statistics. We're not done with these topics. We're going to go on and we're going to study regression, which is very tightly correlated to uh, or the concept of correlation. So follow me on as we'll do those topics right now. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.